All right, this lesson is all about factoring. We're going to factor by pulling out a greatest common factor, and we're going to factor trinomials, which will almost always factor as a binomial times a binomial. I apologize in advance. I'm, I'm losing my voice a little bit. Um, so looking at number one, what is the greatest common factor? Well, it looks like uh, the biggest number that divides evenly into 10 and 45 is 5. Um, there are no variables in common, so 5 all by itself is the greatest common factor. Um, now, one way to look at it is we're dividing once you uh, factor out this GCF. So if you take this 5 and divide, it makes it really easy to see what's going to be left inside the parentheses. So 10 divided by 5 is 2, and uh, 45 divided by 5 is 9. Now, if you think back the distributive property, um, it should take you back to where you started from, and of course it does. Okay, so that's the answer number one. Number two, um, the uh, greatest common factor here is 11. You, know, you look at 33, you know that's uh, divisible by 11. 121 is 11 squared, so um, the GCF is 11. So we'll pull that out. And again, divide with your common factor. So um, 121 divided by 11 is 11. So I have 11K. And uh, of course, 33 divided by, by 11 is 3. So that's the answer number 2. <clears throat> All right, uh, number 3. Uh, I can see that the greatest common factor is 4. 4 divides evenly into all these. Um, notice that 2 also goes into all these, but you have to pull out the greatest common factor, the biggest number you can. So we will pull out that 4, okay, and um, go ahead and divide with it. Alright, so those fours cancel out. So that leaves me with x to the third power plus 4x squared. And 44 divided by 4 is 11. <coughs> yeah. Okay, um, and number 4. This time they all have a variable in common as well. So we're going to take out more than just a number. Okay, um, I'm looking at these uh, 33. I always try to look for the one that has the least factors. So um, it uh, narrows down my options. So 33, I know factors down as 3 times 11. All right, those are prime numbers. So these are the only numbers uh, that could possibly be common to all three. So uh, 42, I know, is not a a multiple of 11. Um, so that leaves out the 11. So the only possible common factor that's left is um, is the 3. <coughs> so sure enough all of these are divisible by 3. Let me mention a uh, shortcut in terms of dividing by 3. Um, if a number is going to be divisible by 3, if you add up the digits, um, the sum should be divisible by 3. Um, so when you look at this, okay, 72. Well, 7 plus 2 is 9. Uh, since 9 is divisible by 3, that means 72 is divisible by 3. <coughs> Obviously, 33 uh, is divisible by 3. When you look at 42, if you weren't sure if that was divisible by 3, think, uh, okay, 4 plus 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. Since 6 is divisible by 3, then 42 will be also divisible by 3. So it's just a little shortcut for divisibility by 3. All right, so they, are, they all are divisible by 3. So 3 is going to be part of my uh, GCF. Now, when it comes to the variables, just go with the lower amount. So the lower amount, we have this term has three A's. So they all have at least three A's. 
So a to the third power will be part of the common factor. So 3a to the third power is the GCF. So let's go ahead and uh, let's divide by that. Okay, so if I divide all of these by 3a to the third power, Okay, 72 divided by th is 24. So that's going to be 24. And then um, if you divide eight, uh, a to the eighth power divided by a to the third power, these are going to cancel out. And uh, that's going to leave a to the fifth power, right? 8 minus 3 is 5 but I think of it as these three A's are going to cancel out three of these A's. All right, um, obviously 33 divided by three is 11. If three of the A's cancel out, that's going to leave two A squared. Um, all of these A's are going to cancel out, so there will be no A's. Um, 42 divided by three is 14, so I've got minus 14. So that is going to be the answer to number 4. Okay, so now we're moving on to factoring trinomials. Uh, notice there is no common factor. When you see a trinomial, and uh, once you've factored out any GCF, it's uh, probably going to factor down as a binomial times a binomial. Now, there are a lot of methods for factoring a trinomial. There's a product sum, there's something called Lizzie's method. Um, some people do some, something with uh, this kind of a formation and different things are happening. Um, anyway, I don't, I don't do those methods. I do uh, sort of a modified guess and check, um, which is not as bad as it sounds. That, you know, I say guess and check and it seems like oh, I'm just going to be going on and on forever. It's um, very quick the way I do it and it works for me. So um, a lot of the methods that I will see other students trying to use work great for problems like this um, with no number in the front. You know, if the leading coefficient is one, you know, problems like five and seven here, they work great. Um, but what happens is when we get to a problem like number eight with the five here, the little shortcuts that they're using often uh, break down. Um, so the methods that other people are teaching you, um, there are ways to make them work for problems like number eight, but students forget. So they come in and they'll say, well, Mr. Burton, I don't remember. I, you know, my teacher taught me this other way, that, a way that you're not teaching, um, and I like that way better, but I don't remember it. And that's the big problem. Um, students tend not to remember. Anyway. Here's how I do it. You look at the x squared first. Okay, there's only one way to factor x squared. That's going to be x times x. Okay, then you look at the number on the end, 25. There are two ways that uh, you could factor 25. It's either going to be um, 5 times 5 or 1 times 25. Now, the key phrase you're going to hear me saying over and over again is inner plus outer has to equal the middle. Inner plus outer has to equal the middle. All right, the middle that I'm talking about is the positive 24x. So with that in mind, um, I'm liking the option of 1 and 25 because I'm trying to get this 24 happening. Um, so let's go with the 1 times 25. Now here's what I mean by inner plus outer equals middle. Inner, I have 1x. Outer, I have 25x. I can make the signs be whatever I want. So is there a way I could choose the signs so that it will make positive 24x total? Well, sure. If I had a negative 1x and a positive 25x, 
that would make positive 24x if I combined like terms. So let's go for that. So um, my negative 1x, well, there's my negative 1 right there. My positive 25, well, there's my positive 25 right there. Um, uh, there's just one last thing to check. Just make sure that negative 1 times positive 25 will give you negative 25 at the end. And of course, a negative times a positive is a negative, so we got it. Okay, so that is the answer. Actually, let me put that back. I'll just put a box around it. All right, so when it comes to showing your work, um, this is what I would like to see uh, as far as showing your work. Uh, you know, if you do some other method, show that. Uh, anyway, number six. And this method that I'm showing you works uh, just as well for problems like number eight, um, which is where some of the other methods get trickier. Okay, no GCF, so uh, let's go for the binomial times binomial. X squared is going to be X times X. I look at the 8, and I think, okay, that's either going to be 2 times 4, or it's going to be 1 times 8. Um, I know that I want the uh, middle to be 7, well, negative 7. So I'm thinking I'm going to try the 1 times 8 because I can see how I can get 7 out of that. Now remember, the, uh, the inner plus the outer has to equal the middle. All right, inner, I have 1x. Outer, I have 8x. What would the signs need to be to make a negative 7x? Well, if I had a positive 1x and a negative 8x, together, that would make negative 7. Um, so, positive 1x, there's my positive 1. Negative 8x, there's my negative 8. Um, does positive 1 times negative 8 make negative 8? Yes, a positive times a negative is a negative. Always check that before you declare victory. So this is the answer. Okay, number 7. no common factor so let's go to binomial times binomial x squared can only be x times x 24 um, 24 could either be uh, 4 times 6 or it could be um, 3 times 8 or it could be um, 2 times 12 or 1 times 24 so there are a lot of ways to uh, factor 24. So um, as an initial try, I'm keeping an eye on the middle of negative uh, 2x. So I'm really liking the 4 and 6 because I can see that they are 2 apart. If I subtract, I would get 2. So I like the 4 and 6. So let's go with 4 times 6. Now, inner plus outer must equal the middle. This is the middle that I'm shooting for. Inner, I've got 4x. Okay, inner. Outer, I've got 6x. Okay? Now, what would the signs on these need to be in order to make a negative 2x? Well, if I had a positive 4x, and a negative 6x, that w if I combine those like terms, that would make negative 2x. So positive 4x, there's my positive 4. Negative 6x, there's my negative 6. Always check one last thing. Um, we need to make sure that the, we have the right sign for the negative 24. Positive times a negative is a negative, so that's good. So this is the answer. All right, as I said a moment ago, um, this, there are a lot of other methods that work well for pro problems like number seven. But a lot of those methods are, are much trickier for problems like number eight. 
All right, but my method works for um, all problems equally. So looking at number eight, there is no common factor. So let's go ahead with binomial times binomial. Okay, so we start with the 5x squared. 5x squared is going to factor as 5x and x. All right, 5 is a prime number, so that's the only way. Um, next, we look at the 3. Well, 3 is easy because it's a prime number. So 3 is only going to be 3 times 1. That's it. Um, now, we focus all of our attention on the middle. All right, because we know that, um, oh, wait, I didn't actually write it down. So 3, 3 times 1. So let's go with that. Now, remember, um, it makes a difference. Maybe it's going to be 3 times 1, like this. Or maybe it's going to turn out to be 1 times 3, like that. OK, that's going to make a difference. So um, I'll show you how to know. So um, say if we try this way first. Inner, we have 1x. OK, inner, like that. Outer, all right, if I multiply these, I'm multiplying now, OK? So um, outer, I have 15x. OK. So the question is, um, if I choose the signs right, is there a way that I can get negative 14x out of this? And there is. Um, if, I, if I do a um, positive 1x and a negative 15x, that will give me negative 14x. So positive 1x, there's my positive 1. Um, that means this one must be the negative for my negative 15. And it makes sense because the 15 comes from the outer terms. So now I've got negative 3 times positive 5 to give me negative 15. So that makes sense. Always check one last thing. Make sure that we have the correct signs to give us a negative 3. Positive times a negative is a negative, so it's good. All right, so this is the answer. OK. However, um, I want to show you real quick how you would know. Um, you know, we were lucky we chose the right way first. But what if we had chosen the other way? Um, how would we know that it was wrong? I'm going to show you that real quick right now. OK, what if we had chosen the other way? All right, so we had um, 5x times x. Say if we had done 3 times 1 instead. All right, inner, we have 3x. Outer, we have 5x. So we would ask ourselves, is there a way we could choose the signs to make negative 14? And quickly, you see that there is not. Um, e even if we made both of these negative, that would make negative 8. But there's no way to make 14. Um, so that's how you would know that that was not going to work. And you would just switch it up and try it the other way. All right, I'm going to stop this video right here. And uh, we'll pick up with number nine on the next video. So I'll see you on the next video.